Take my hands. Close your eyes. Now feel. I see tears streaming down your face. What does this mean to you today? It feels like a betrayal. It feels like my country doesn't love me and appreciate my body as a woman. Um, I can't even, I can't even chant because I, I can't say anything. It's day 360 of being a woman, and it's my first International Women's Day. I just passed these girls, and they were all decked out in pink. Of course, I just say to them, hi, Barbie, as I pass by. Hi, Ken. Hey, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. And now you've got Barbie and Greta Gerwig. And I think I told them they'd make a billion dollars. Maybe I was overselling, but we had a movie to make, okay? Hot girls are walking, girls are blogging, Dinner is girl. 40 year old men are baby girls. We are in a girl economy. This is my meal. I call this girl dinner. I feel like being a black woman, the way people communicate with me is different. I, mean, I just don't understand how you don't want your legacy to be carried on, bro. Like, my but legacy is me. Do you think it's harder or more confusing to be a man today? I don't think it makes it any more difficult for me to be masculine, but being a man in general, I think, has been getting more difficult. Like, what do you want? They got like a checkbox, like, are you gonna pick me up? Are you gonna pull, are you gonna walk on the outside of the sidewalk? Are you gonna open the door? Are you gonna pull out the seat? Are you gonna drop me off? Are you gonna watch me walk inside? And then are you gonna text me after? And it's like trying to defuse a bomb. Like, if trade off of like going on a date and as the man being like, oh, this sucks, I have to pay, or as the woman being like, oh, this sucks, I might get murdered, is like a pretty big, you know, yeah. imbalance. Why would a man be there? Why would a man be there? So 2023 has been a crazy year for girlhood and womanhood in pop culture, media, politics, social circles, everything in between. And I'm doing my thesis on it. Hi everyone, my name is Kathy Pham. I am a senior in the digital design program at CU Denver, and this is my thesis pitch for the 2024 thesis exhibition. So why girlhood? Since the overturning of Roe v. Wade in the summer of last year, we've seen a shift in the proliferation and celebration of femininity in Western pop culture. From the Eras tour to the Barbie movie, to ribbons and bows and Sandy Liang totes, from breakups galore to men having the audacity, from girl dinner to girl math and of course their masculine counterparts. See? Girlhood is so fun, the boys want to be a part of it too! Who knew? However, this celebration of girlhood is happening at a time where girlhood has never been more fraught. We are definitely living in a girl economy, but the overturning of Roe v. Wade means women now have fewer rights than in previous generations. Is this trend of reclaiming girlhood a retaliation against gender inequality? Are women using their spending power to compensate for the rights they have lost, or is it just capitalism? Is the return to girlhood connected with alt-right trends like the Trad Wife and Manosphere podcasts? Are young women going to continue this perpetual infantilization into 20 2024 and beyond. And it's not just women who have been impacted this year. Queer folk and trans folk have been targeted by conservative politicians nationwide, and men are experiencing a crisis of masculinity because we all, quoting my professor Maria Elena Bisek here, are gendered, whether we like it or not. And we are all coming to a reckoning with our society both challenging traditional gender norms while also reinforcing this return to tradition. The big question here is, how do we make sense of all this? What does it mean to be a woman in a world where it has never been more terrifying to be one? And an even bigger question is, how do we contend with being a woman, a man, or simply anyone of any gender given all the gender troubles we've had this year. My goal with this thesis project is to answer, or at least try to answer, these questions and explore the phenomenon of girlhood and gender in 2023 through an interactive editorial website. The aim of my thesis is to create an all-encompassing resource for public audiences that not only documents but analyzes 
these events from a critical and scholarly, yet artsy, fun, lighthearted pop culture point of view. One example of a similar project in existence is Jada Okoto's Bad Girls Club. This is a multimedia graphic design thesis that explores Black femininity in reality TV, both critiquing yet embracing the messiness of it all. I recently had the opportunity to talk with Okoto about her thesis and ask her questions about her perspective on archival practices as a BIPOC woman designer, and this is the piece of advice she gave me. I think like archival practices are like really contentious and like are precious forms of general human interaction. In order for you to write about something gracefully and to honor a person, it has to be done with a lot of care. And I think it's interesting that most of our recorded history is the way it is because white people who thrive in ideas of like the pillars of white supremacy can document our lives. That's why I, I think it's important for marginalized people to be the ones archiving their stories, archiving their community stories, because we're gonna treat it, we're gonna treat it with the most care. We are living in an interesting time in history. And I believe that by writing about what's happening now, encouraging conversations about it, bringing analysis of current events to the public, especially for young women and young girls, it's important to preserve this history. So how am I gonna do it? My scope over the next semester is to design a fully functional and published website with Figma and ReadyMag. I plan to use Figma as a prototype tool. It's very common within the UI UX space and ReadyMag as a website builder, which I also use for my portfolio. Before I can do that though, I will need to research, organize, and write the content that will be included. Most sources will come from outlets like New York Times, Washington Post, NPR, but other sources will come from academic articles or other relevant books within the sphere of gender studies, history, and pop culture. The research and planning phase will likely take up the first two months of the semester, so I can dedicate March and most of April to designing, testing, and publishing the website. As for the visual design, I want this website to be more playful and experimental, which is why I've decided to use ReadyMag to build it. The editorial examples on ReadyMag are absolutely spectacular, and I especially love Artem Militonian's websites. His works speak on more serious and jarring topics like the war in Ukraine and the Armenian genocide, but they are expertly designed to create an emotional narrative using no code, only ReadyMag. Since my topic is on the lighthearted side, my goal is to integrate current Gen Z trends and aesthetics with the nostalgia of Y2K and early internet. I also want to pay homage to women illustrators, designers, and artists in recent history, so keep an eye out for that. As for additional deliverables, we have a process book, which is required. It's essentially a behind the scenes look at mood boards, brand design, writing, drafts, the entire planning process that has led to the final solution. Another thing I want to do is make t-shirts along with the digital aspect of the website. It's something physical and tangible that you can wear and keep, but it also promotes this project. Merch is great. It's free advertising. But yeah, this thesis exhibition will be held at Redline in the Rhino District in Denver sometime in late April to early May. It is open to the public for everyone to see, so go check it out. Please support me and my classmates, and thank you for tuning into my pitch. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you whenever. Bye!